folks, Jordy here for After Effects Basics, and today we're gonna do some motion tracking. That was one of the suggestions from you guys, so if you have any other ideas, let us know in the comments down below. What I've got right here is a woman dancing. She seems to be happy, so I thought, let's show that happiness through an emoji. This is a simple PNG image, which I like to stick on her head that follows her movement. That technique is called motion tracking, and the first thing you wanna do is select the clip from which you wanna track the motion, and then locate the tracker window. If you can't find it, you can always go to the top menu and under window, choose tracker. There are a couple of different tracking techniques we are going to choose track motion and this will open up your clip in a new viewport the layer view you can see that on top right here if you want to go back to your composition view you have to open up the other tab so uh, that's something to be aware of all right going back to the tracker window you'll see a couple of options down here what are you planning to track is it only the position movement of your subject or perhaps also the rotation and the scale we currently have one tracking point in the viewport that's enough for just the position but if we enable the rotation as well we get a second track point that's because we need two tracking points to calculate the rotation or the scale and now we have to move the tracker point to a spot that has a high contrast and which is of course the element that we want to track. In this case it's the head. You can make the tracker points a little bit bigger which makes them easier to work with. I'm gonna place these tracker points over her eyes. It has a good contrast. Nostrils are oftentimes good as well but not in this example. Her earrings could also work but her hair covers it too often so that's not too ideal. You want to make sure that the point you wish to track stays visible throughout the entire shot. The inner the rectangle from the tracking point defines the spot that you want to track. The outer square is the search area, so the area in which the contrast point is going to move in in the next frame. If your subject doesn't move that much, you can keep this fairly small. In our example, we are going to make it big enough. Now do keep in mind that the tracking will take longer the bigger these rectangles are. All right, they sit in place. The tracking can start. On the bottom of the tracking window, we can play back the clip or move up by one frame. We can also play back in reverse or go back by one frame. All right, let's just play the tracking. Now keep your mouse pointer on the stop button and keep your eyes on the tracking itself. If one of the two tracking points go off, you have to stop the tracking. Like here, the tracking points are not at the eyes anymore, so I'm going to go back in a timeline to where they are back at the right spot, and then track again by one frame. Sometimes this works, but if it does fail again, we might need to change the tracking areas. So let's go back one frame and perhaps make the tracking point a little bit smaller, but the search area bigger. And now let's try that again. Awesome, it worked. Now let's continue with the rest. And we are done. If you go to your layer and the composition and expand the properties, you can actually see the two tracking points and all of the keyframes that have automatically been created. This right here is called the tracking data, a set of keyframes that we can use for various things like sticking an emoji on someone's face. And if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, then definitely come and hang out with us on Instagram. Every week we make more advanced visual effects tutorials on our main channel Cinecom. And we share all of the behind the scenes there and talk with our community. You can watch our weekly VFX reels or see what silly things that I usually do. And all in all, it's just a really fun place to hang out with us. There's a link down below or you can also just search for cinecom.crew on Instagram, so I really hope to see you there. All right, back to After Effects, I'm going to teach you a technique that we use in a professional workflow. We are first going to store this tracking data into another layer. So right click into an empty space of your timeline, choose new and then select null object. This is a nothing object. It has basic transform properties, but furthermore, it doesn't do anything. However, we are going to use that to store the tracking data in. So from the tracker window, click on edit target and make sure that the null layer is selected in here. Then we can simply click on apply and choose both the X and Y dimensions before hitting OK. This will apply the entire tracking to the null object and you can see that it has a bunch of keyframes now. And when scrubbing through the timeline, that null object also beautifully follows the eyes of the woman. Now ideally you want to rename the null object to face tracking data or something because when you're going to work on more complex effects, it's possible that you have many of these null objects in here. So always keep that organized for yourself, guys. All right, let's add the emoji to the comp and drag it somehow at the right position. It doesn't have have to be that perfect and you'll see in a moment why that is. We want the emoji to follow the motion of the null object. 
Next to the layer, you'll find the parent and link options. If you can't see that, simply right click in the columns, then columns and here enable parent and link. Now simply take the pick whip tool and link it to the null. And that's it. The great thing is now that the emoji doesn't have any keyframes, so you can freely move it around, rotate it, change the scale, do whatever you want with it. From the position it's at, it's going to follow the null at all times. And that's why it's so important to use this workflow. And there we go, we made someone even happier than they were before. And you can make me very happy as well by simply hitting that like button, which really helps this video to perform better on YouTube and thus you're supporting the channel. Also guys, make sure to find the Instagram link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay creative. Now, check out the video here on my left and over there is the subscribe button if you want to see us every single week. And if you want to see me every day, you know what to do, Instagram. All right, guys, take care and goodbye.